Uh, well, taking another person's life is a very serious thing. Not only for the deceased person, but for the whole tribe. It affects the whole family and everyone related to that deceased person and the offender. It's a concern for everybody. And that matter needs to be dealt with straight away. Not two days later, not one week later, not a year later, not 20 years later, but straight away. Someone who is caused the death, death in the family to face his own people and stand in front of the people with someone there next to him, you know, to administer, to make sure that punishment take place in the eyes of the people. Punishment took place, and everyone in that community are happy and satisfied that he's passed through that tribal punishment. And then other communities hear that, and the word is nearly our In other words, everybody satisfied with the punishment that took place with that young fella or older fella or that offender. We're not going to kill that man, spear him through the heart or spear him through the neck or wherever to get rid of him, eye for an eye. No, that's not the case. The case is all about learning that young fella physically. Uh, it's a harsh punishment, but it means that this is a lesson for anybody who acts in that way. But you will receive these punishments to stop further violent crime in the community, serious crime. They forgive each other now, say sorry to each other. That's the last bit. They hug each other and shake hands or whatever that need to take place and it's finished, not to be carried on. We're back to square one again. Then we can give him to the law, the Korean law. That Yauru business, Yauru Manja business is finished with the Yako law. It's been done. As in the old days, he was given this warlu, warlu fire stick, and he's instructed to go away from this village, not to come back for so many years. Aboriginal law is not just about punishing people when they do the wrong thing.
It's the center of us in everything we do. It is with us, forming the guideline for our life, from when we're born to when we die. Some people think Aboriginal law is only part of our history now, but they are wrong. It is our history, it is our story, our ceremony and our court system. It is one of the biggest key to Australian future. Kevin Rudd, this is a message for you. Now that you are our Prime Minister, we want you to support and encourage and strengthen, strengthen our law, our culture, our customary ways. Because we are being bogged down by your culture and it's weighing too much on us. We need your support, we need your help. For goodness sake, do something. Britain will formally apologise for its role in resettling thousands of children, mainly without their parents' consent, to Australia and Canada over the last century. Meanwhile, the Australian government is due to make a national apology on Monday to half a million children who were placed in foster homes and in institutional care between the 1930s and 70s. Those children were promised a better life, but many later complained of physical and sexual abuse in care homes and on farms. Nick Bryant has this report from Canberra. The story of the British child migrants shipped to Australia has been described as a shameful history of deceit, lies and official neglect. The children were commonly told they were orphans, only to find out decades later that their parents were still alive. Most were deported without the consent of their mothers and fathers. Sandra Anker was brought to Australia at the age of six. Tricked into thinking she was embarking on a great adventure, she became a castaway of the British Empire. We've had a, a horrendous life. It took years and years of misery, of not knowing where we come from, who we were, being denied our birthright of being British. It, it, it's, it's really, really been horrendous. At Parliament House in Canberra, the Australian government will say sorry to British child migrants on Monday morning. And that appears to have prompted a change of heart in London. On the eve of the Australian apology, Downing Street has indicated that Gordon Brown will say sorry as well. Sometime in the new year, after consulting with the victims. But they've already complained that he's been shamed into action by the Australians. It's a question we put to Britain's new High Commissioner in Canberra. Baroness Amos. I think we have all been shocked by this part of our history and I think it's important that we're apologizing now. It's over 20 years since the scandal was first uncovered and over 7,000 British child migrants still live in Australia. For them, the planned apology is way overdue. Nick Bryant, BBC News, Canberra. States of abuse and neglect. Now there's a formal apology to half a million forgotten Australians. In other news, this hour the Australian Prime Minister Kevin Rudd has formally apologised to half a million people who suffered neglect or abuse as children in state care. Known as the forgotten Australians, the children were put into institutions between the 1930s and 70s. Mr Rudd said Australia should look back in shame at the humiliation so many children endured, including thousands who were sent from Britain. Nick Bryant reports from Canberra. They were drawn to Canberra by the promise of a single word. Hundreds of forgotten Australians and former British child migrants for whom the term abuse seems wholly inadequate in describing their early childhood experiences. Some 500,000 forgotten Australians were abused or neglected in children's homes from 1930 to 1970. And there are still some 7,000 surviving British child migrants 
who were victims of physical, psychological and often sexual mistreatment. Not of your own making. Kevin Rudd wanted to apologize for what he called the evil they suffered in orphanages and institutions and for being brought to Australia, often without their parents' consent. We come together today to deal with an ugly chapter in our nation's history. And we come together today to offer our nation's apology. To say to you, the forgotten Australians, and those who were sent to our shores as children without their consent, that we are sorry. This was a solemn national apology, but it's been so long coming that it felt as well like a national celebration and certainly a moment of catharsis. I think it was beautiful. It's about time and we got it, yes. So it's going to make a difference for you? We'll get over it. It'll be hard, but we'll do it. Sorry. The government, yeah, they took us as children, put us into care. You know, they've got the decency enough to apologise to us now, but I do think it's up to the institutions to do it, not just the government. I can move on, but I can't. It's not closed. Nothing's ever closed. Um, pain and torment just stays with you forever, but it's a little bit easier as time goes on. The orphanage boy within me has come out. I feel relieved, and, yeah, it's uplifting. Gordon Brown says he'll now deliver a long-awaited apology of his own after consulting with the victims. And following the ceremony at Parliament House, some 40 former child migrants visited the British High Commission in Canberra. One said it was like a lost tribe finally returning home. Nick Bryant, BBC News, Canberra. <laughs> now to an apology which many would say is very long overdue. Between 1930 and 1970, around half a million people known as the Forgotten Australians were abused or neglected in state-run orphanages. And today in Canberra, Prime Minister Kevin Rudd said that he was sorry for the childhoods lost. In a highly emotional ceremony, attended by many British citizens who were shipped out of their country, Rudd expressed his hope that the national apology would help heal the pain. But as our correspondent Nick Bryant reports, the scars run very deep. They were drawn to the nation's capital by the promise of a single word. Hundreds of former British child migrants and forgotten Australians waiting just a few more minutes for an apology they believe is decades overdue. As children, many were victims of such appalling physical and sexual mistreatment that to describe it as abuse seems wholly inadequate. Many were told their parents were dead, only to find out decades later they were still alive. This did have the feel of a day of national atonement. We are sorry. Sorry that as children you were taken from your families and placed in institutions where so often you were abused. Sorry for the physical suffering, the emotional starvation, and the cold absence of love, of tenderness, of care. Sorry for the tragedy, the absolute tragedy, of childhoods lost. And his words were greeted with applause and release. The policy lasted until the late 1960s. Care agencies worked with the government to send disadvantaged children to what was supposed to be a rosy future and supply what was deemed good white stock to a former colony. There's a strong belief that a rural society was somehow ideologically superior, that it led to greater health physically, but also more spiritually, emotionally. These children would be better off moved from inner cities in this country to rural environments overseas. Back in the UK, family members like Roy Stacey knew nothing of their siblings' plight. They're still mourning the years that were lost. I feel totally bitter because it was a stitch-up. I can't think of any other words for it. It was a stitch-up by the UK authorities and the Australian authorities and various institutions over here. This consultation process will culminate in an apology from Gordon Brown sometime in the new year. A second sorry and perhaps some peace of mind. Nick Bryant, BBC News, Canberra.